Remember we said that um, some reactions go to equilibrium and some reactions go to completion. In fact, that was a big theme in the acid-base chapter, right? We saw that reactions with strong acids and bases went to completion, but if everything was weak, it went to equilibrium. Well, we have to do the same thing here for this chapter. Some of these dissolution reactions are going to go to completion, and some of them are going to go to equilibrium. Uh, what, 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 what does it mean if the dissolution goes to completion? Well, what that means, if, if, it, if a dissolution always goes to completion, what that really means is that the substance is completely soluble, right? Some substances are almost completely soluble. That is, you can dissolve almost as much as you want. Some substances are so soluble, you can dissolve almost as much as you want, which means that their dissolution reactions go to completion. Okay, it's when they dissolve fully. Yeah, so some substances almost always completely dissolve, and those have reactions that go to completion. Okay. On the other hand, there are some substances that can only dissolve a little bit, and then they stop. Those are what are called only slightly soluble, right? There's some things that are only slightly soluble. They dissolve somewhat, and then they can't dissolve anymore. That is, they keep dissolving until they get to equilibrium. Uh, and once they're at equilibrium, they can't dissolve anymore. Equilibrium for a dissolution reaction is called saturation. When you're at equilibrium for a dissolution reaction, that's saturation. So there's some substances that they, they dissolve for a while, and then they reach saturation, which means equilibrium, and they can't dissolve anymore. Okay. What about precipitation? Well, remember that precipitation is just the opposite of okay. dissolution. Oh, okay. So um, if you have something that's completely soluble, it would never precipitate. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you have something that's only slightly soluble, then it's very easy to get it to precipitate. All right, but, but let's, let's uh, come back to that. Well, um, so how do you know whether something is completely soluble or only slightly soluble? Well, you might remember, this has usually gone over in the first semester, there's some rules for solubility. There's some rules that some ions are completely soluble and some are soluble with some things and not with other things. Yeah, uh, I'm really bad at remembering those rules, so I don't know whether your instructor wants you to have those rules memorized or not. The first and the second uh, raw of metal soluble. The columns? Uh, yeah. Now, I actually, I don't think that the, set, that the things in the first column are usually completely soluble. The things in the second column are not always soluble. It's sodium, uh, potassium, right. and uh, I think right. calcium. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't think the calcium is always soluble things because calcium is in the second column. Okay. Well, anyway, the only point I wanted to make is um, the only rules that I think are really important to memorize is we should memorize that there are certain ions that are completely soluble with everything. There's certain ions that are completely soluble with everything. And I think you just mentioned a couple of them. Sodium and potassium. Things from the first column tend to be very soluble. And there's also an anion, which is pretty much completely soluble, which is nitrate. Yeah, and no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, there might be other things that are usually soluble, but these are the most important. So these, these are the things that I think are most important to memorize. These three things are almost completely soluble with everything. Sodium, potassium, and nitrate. Other ions might be soluble with some counter-ions and insoluble with other counter-ions. And I, I have a hard time memorizing all of that. I don't know if you need to have that memorized, but you should have memorized the things that are completely soluble with everything. Sodium, potassium, and nitrate. So, for example, What would be the products of this reaction? Na plus plus Cl minus. What would be the phase here? Uh, it's aqueous and the reaction can go to completion. Because NA sodium is completely soluble with everything. So, so I would write this reaction with a straight arrow mm -hmm. um, because we can expect this is going to go to completion. So I would expect that this would completely dissolve. Okay. So one way to tell that something is completely soluble is if it has one of these ions in it. Now, how do you analyze a reaction that goes to completion? Remember that if the reaction goes, remember we're going to be using ice tables, right? Initial change end, start change end tables, just like we did for the acid base chapter. So how do, how do we analyze this? How do we figure out what the changes are? Well, the changes for a reaction that goes to completion, the changes come from looking for the limiting reagent. 
right? Okay, it's like in an acid and base. Yeah, so if this is going to completion, I'd look for the limiting reagent, and that really much has to be this, because there's only one thing on the left-hand side. So basically, this would keep going forward until there's none of the solid left. It's pretty simple. You're going to keep using this up until there's none of the solid left, because it gets to completely dissolve. On the other hand, how do we analyze reactions that go to equilibrium? Well, remember, we analyze those by using the equilibrium constant. Uh, and in fact, remember, at equilibrium, what's the relationship between Q and Q K? Q equals K. That's right. So this is how we analyze reactions that go to equilibrium. If they go to equilibrium, if the, if this, if the salt is um, only somewhat soluble, then we're going to go to equilibrium. And we can use this to give ourselves an equation. We, we saw how we use this for acid-base reactions, right? Now, remember that for acid-base reactions, there were a lot of special Ks. There was the KW mm -hmm. for that water auto-ionization. There was the KA for acid reactions with water. There was the KB for base reactions with water. Well, there's also a special name for the equilibrium constant for a dissolution reaction. Do, do you remember from class what's the special symbol for the equilibrium constant for a dissolution reaction? Don't remember that? That is the KSP, or the solubility product. So the special name for the equilibrium constant here is the KSP. Mm -hmm. that, that's a pretty logical name because it's called solubility product. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would be our KSP. Um, so instead of setting the Q equal to K, what we'll really be doing here is setting the Q equal to the KSP, but that's just the special K. All right, but I wouldn't use that for this reaction. This is not going to equilibrium. So notice if the problem tells you the KSP, then you know that this compound is only slightly soluble because if it was completely soluble, they wouldn't need the KSP. It's just like, remember, if they tell you the KA, you know it's a weak acid, because if it was a strong acid, you wouldn't need the KA. Well, if they tell you the KSP, you know that the, um, that the uh, substance is only somewhat soluble. By the way, remember another name for these compounds is salts. Remember that a salt is really just a synonym, pretty much a synonym for an ionic compound. Okay, so if they give you the KSP, we know that the salt is only slightly soluble, and we're gonna need this approach. Well, we need to practice then writing the KSP. Okay. Um, do they have values in a table too as an acid? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So if you remember, for the acid-base chapter, again, we could look up the KA and the KB for most acids and bases. Well, for the same token, you can look up the solubility product for okay. many, uh, for many uh, salts as well. So in many cases, or maybe the problem will just tell you the KSP. But yeah, there's great big books that are full of KSPs. Well, let's try writing the Q for this reaction. What would the Q be for this reaction? Uh, products over reactants. Let's try writing that out. So you remember that we put the products on top. And I think you also remembered that the exponents for the Q and the K are the coefficients from the balanced reaction. So what was the coefficient on the calcium? Well, we didn't write a coefficient, but that really means it has a coefficient of 1. So this exponent is 1, and here's a 2. By the way, that's why it was so important that we said that there were two hydroxides here. Remember that first when we wrote this equation, we forgot to put in the 2. But if we forget to put in this 2, we'll forget to put in this 2. So it's important to realize that since there are two equivalents of hydroxide on the left, this coefficient is 2 on the right. Does it mean that it's per 1 calcium we get two OHs, yeah? Like that's exactly what it means. Or we could say even more. Um, so you could say every time we make one calcium ion, we make two hydroxide ions. Okay. Or you could say 
every time we dissolve one calcium hydroxide unit, we make two hydroxide units oh. and one calcium unit. Okay. And that's really common sense. Each of these units has one calcium and two hydroxides. So it makes sense that every time you dissolve one of these, you get one calcium and two hydroxides. Or you could say every time you dissolve one mole of this, you get one mole of the cations and two moles of the anions. In any case, that gives us this exponent of two. But now on the starting material side, all we have is a pure solid. And then you remembered from the, the, that chapter that we don't include solid and liquid phases. Um, or actually, in a sense, we are including them. We include them as a one. So, um, so if, you, if you think of yourself as including it, you, you're including it as a one. Okay. So that would be the Q for this reaction. Now, this is really crucial to write this correctly because we're, we're going to need to do this in almost every single problem. So it's important to, to write this out correctly, and you got that. Then if we set this equal to the KSP, that gives us an equation, and we can try to solve that equation for whatever the problem is asking us for. 